What's up everybody? I'm Adam. You're watching Model Aviator and I'm finally getting around to putting the pilot in this Duraflight Gladiator. But that's not why we're here. Have you ever heard a saying, a statement that somebody makes about RC aviation? You might read it in the forums, you might hear it at the field, but it just keeps popping up over and over and over again. And every time you hear it, you think, eh, I don't know about that. Well, so have we. And this week, we're going to talk about a couple of those. So, right out of the gate, we want to make one thing clear. This is not another RC Myths video. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's been done before. We're calling these RC sayings because there's a difference in the very definition. Definition of myth, as it relates to our hobby, is a widely held but false belief. So, in other words, a lot of people think it's true, but it never is. Well, these RC sayings that we're going to take issue with today can be true, but they don't have to be. And the two that we're going to take issue with are every RC airplane has an expiration date and all foamies will suffer from hangar rash. I just don't believe either of those. So we'll take a second to clarify what we mean by these two sayings. When it comes to hangar rash, most RC pilots consider any minor damage done to their foamy, whether it actually be in the hangar or in transportation, even getting the plane from the hangar to your transportation, getting it out and back into your transportation at the field, and even minor flying incidents like wingtip scrapes and nose overs on landing. All of the damage incurred in all those situations to most RC pilots is considered hangar rash. And when it comes to the other saying, all RC planes have an expiration date, well that means exactly what it sounds like it means. Every airplane in your hangar, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. You're going to crash them. Now, there are clearly times when those two sayings are absolutely true. If you're the type of person that just looks at your RC airplanes as toys, you can afford to replace them if you don't like them. You can't be bothered with really putting any effort into being careful or really taking care of them. This is one of those things that the hobby for you is just kind of put your mind in neutral and relax about it, right? If you look at it like that, as long as you can be safe and not put other people and their property in danger, there's nothing in the world wrong with that. And if you're the type of person that flies an airplane, similar to the way that we fly some of them when we're flying in challenges, for instance. <laughs> Yeah, if you fly like that, or your approach to the hobby is that way, nothing wrong with that, but guaranteed, your foam airplanes are going to have some hangar rash, and they probably have an expiration date. So the issue for me with those two sayings is that when you hear people saying that, they say it with such conviction. It's as if they truly believe that those two things are an inevitability. You will have a trashed foam airplane riddled with hangar rash. No way to avoid it. And you will crash everything in your hangar at some point. Well, let's see if we can just simply start by getting an airplane from the hangar into the truck and see what happens. So I'm getting ready to go to the field, and I've got my Aeros Husky here. This thing's got a 71-inch wingspan, so a pretty good size foam airplane, and it is assembled, which makes it, you know, a little bit harder to handle because it's big. Let's get it to the truck. All right, got to get her through the door. Got to come around this corner, and of course I got to watch Piper because she's here to help. Come down the stairs. And I've got another corner around. Got to get by the Charlie Brown Christmas tree. I just noticed that. And I've got to get through this door. So I got a double door. One and then another one here into the garage. Then I've got to negotiate these shelves and Heidi's Xterra. Make sure I don't hit the wings coming out of the garage. All right, then I got to get her in my truck. And this takes a little bit of patience. I got to put one wing in here, get the tail passed.
Then I'm going to go around, open this door, finish bringing the plane over. And I'm going to use a towel. to chalk the wheels and make sure that it can't move or shift when I'm driving. Now there's a method to the madness of showing you my path all the way from upstairs in the hangar through all those doorways by all the things I have to get by and into the truck. Notice not one time did that airplane touch a single thing. Not one mark on it and the way it's secured in the car even if I go over bumps it's not going to hit anything in the car. I haven't packed airplanes in there on top of each other with no bracing so that they slide against each other and mark up my airplanes. Well, that's one way to do it. The funny thing is, I know a lot of people. I could probably name 10 right off the top of my head. These are good folks. I fly with them on a regular basis. Some of their foam airplanes look like an absolute hot mess. And these guys are pretty good pilots. I don't see them doing a whole lot of damage from flying or taking off or landing. And they've said things to me along the lines of, Man, Adam, I love how convenient these foam airplanes are. I just wish you could keep them looking good. What are they doing? I gotta get their feel. Okay, so to be fair, Bubba may be a pretty extreme example of what I'm talking about. You went a little overboard there, but I've seen some folks that are not far off that. I watch the way some of these folks handle their airplanes, and let's be honest, I'm not talking about the people that don't care. That, you know, bang it into something and just press on. They're, they're not really concerned about hangar rash. They're not concerned about crashing the airplane. I'm talking about the people that do care. When they bang it into a pole or the side of their truck at the field, you can see the disappointment on their face. You can, you can hear the comment that they make. They didn't mean to do it, but they keep doing it. I don't know if it's just they're too lazy to be careful or if maybe they've bought into that saying and they just believe there's no point. I don't know, but it seems like it doesn't take that much longer to pay attention and be careful than it does to be in a hurry and be careless. But Anyway, that's just me. So, with that, let's start talking about the other saying, and that is that all RC airplanes have an expiration date. I think it's probably smart to start in the shop, in the hangar, without putting hangar rash on the airplane. Let's see if there's a few things that maybe we can do to keep that dreaded expiration date from creeping up on us. In my experience, one of the most important decisions that we make as RC model aviators and one of the decisions that can give you the best chance of avoiding that dreaded expiration date is to choose good equipment. I'm standing here with the Extreme Flight 48-inch Edge 540T for a reason. This is an airplane, it's an ARF, where you get to choose nose to tail the equipment that you put in it. I put really good equipment in this airplane. I'm looking at a Flightline RC 1.6 meter Spitfire behind you. That means a lot to me love that airplane. I want to keep it in as good a condition as I possibly can. So I replaced the fairly low-grade servos that came in it on the rudder and the elevator with much higher quality high-tech servos. I spent 50 bucks for two servos to give myself a better chance of not having an electronic failure with that airplane that I can't handle. And I know if I have a hard lock on either one of those, I'm probably not going to have much of a chance of saving it. So, you don't have to always buy the most expensive equipment, but if you avoid the bargain basement stuff, at least on an airplane that you'd like to keep in one piece, it will greatly increase your chances of doing just that. Another thing that I've found really helpful, and 
a lot of people are not going to buy into this. There are a lot of people that when you take model aviation as seriously as applying full-scale principles to your model aviation, they're just, <laughs> they kind of switch it off. They just don't want to go to that much trouble, and that's okay if you don't. But if you care about your airplanes, you want to keep them in one piece, you'd like to keep from losing them, you'd like to keep from doinking them up a lot. Two of the things that they do in the full-scale world that you can do with your models is simply pre-flight inspections at the field and annual inspections in the shop. Now, we'll talk about our pre-flight inspection first, and you can do this on the bench while your batteries are charging before you go to the field. Usually once is enough. A lot of times, depending on the airplane, I may do it depending on the nature of the airplane before every flight, but usually just once is enough. And basically all I'm going to do is start at the front of the airplane. We've got our Park Zone Albatross here. And yes, my lovely wife Heidi painted this thing. We got a really cool episode on this project. If you haven't checked it out, do. It's cool. So, I'm going to grab the prop and I'm just going to kind of move that. That's going to let me know a couple things. A, the prop is tight and so is the motor. I'm going to turn the airplane over and I'm going to look at the screws. Every single screw, cabanes, the gear, the wings, the tail skid, the tail. I'm just making sure everything is tight, or at least looks to be tight. I'm looking at all of my control surfaces, making sure that my clevis is engaged and my fuel tubing is slid up where it needs to be to ensure that that clevis doesn't come apart. Checking it on the ailerons. I'm looking at my wheel collars on the wheels. They are both tight and secure, so the wheels aren't going to come off. Yeah, so that's pretty much the pre-flight inspection, short of grabbing a hold of each control surface and just checking, looking to make sure that my hinges are still secure and that's pretty much it. That didn't take any time at all and it took a lot more time because I was having to tell you about it while I was doing it. You cut that in half if I didn't have to talk about it. All I would add to the annual inspection would simply be put a tool on everything on any airplane. Every nut, every bolt, every grub screw, everything, whether it be in your trackable landing gear on your oleos, every single thing that can loosen, put a tool on it and just make sure that it's tight. If it's a balsa airplane, I'll add taking the cowling off and looking at the high stress points. I want to really inspect the wood and all the glue joints. I want to check my motor box my battery tray where the gear mounts and where the wings attach to the airplane because on a balsa airplane that's where the most of the stress is and that's where you're going to find when you start wiggling things around sometimes you'll find stress cracks now what is the point of all this even being as anal as checking the wheel collars well listen i've had wheels come off airplanes because i didn't check it you know what happens when you land without a wheel over it goes well that's not an expiration date but that's some hanger rash you can avoid that. I've seen people crash airplanes because they did have a clevis come loose because they didn't check it. Or they had a servo arm come off because they didn't check that screw to hold that servo arm in. And when stuff like that happens, that's more than hangar rash. That may very well be the expiration date. So annual inspections and pre-flight checks, which don't take long with a model, can save you an airplane. Okay, so there's one more thing I can mention that can definitely improve your chances of avoiding not only hangar rash, but expiration dates. You knew it was going to come down to this. That's what happens when you get one of these in your hand. What you do with the transmitter is so important. How good of a pilot you are, your skill set means so much and can help you to avoid becoming a statistic and solidify those two, what I think are pretty ridiculous sayings, better you are, the better your chances are. So, we have a video on becoming a better RC pilot. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's been helpful to a lot of people. We've got a really warm reception to that. People seem to like it. Maybe you will too, and maybe it will help you. 
There's one other part when it comes to flying that can definitely help you, and that is decision making and discipline. We're going to go to the field and elaborate on that. That was a windy flight. So, flying in wind causes a lot of problems for RC pilots, and a lot of times you see a lot of hangar rash occur and a lot of those expiration dates sneak up on people. Now, flying in wind is a special skill, and being able to do it well really takes some practice, and I recommend getting a beater and learning how to do that. Do it with and without gyros so that you know the difference in how much a gyro dampens things for you because they're not magic. They dampen a lot, but eventually the wind will get high enough to where you're still going to have to have some skill and know what to do when the wind gets up high, even with one. So get a beater, practice, and that way you'll know how much wind component you and your plane can handle, and that's good information to have. You mix a little discipline with that, and it can save you a lot of trouble. Now, in the full-scale world, there's something called get their itis and that's when a full-scale pilot is traveling, they're on their way to some place, and weather conditions change. Maybe there's thunderstorms in the area, wind's blowing, it's volatile, and they really should just wait until the next day to continue their trip, but they decide, nope, got to get there, and they try it. Well, a lot of full-scale pilots and everybody on their plane die every year because of making that bad decision. Now, in the RC world, let's face it, it's not that serious. These are just models. Nobody's going to die. But there is something in the RC world that I like to call I'm here-itis. And I've seen that damage a lot of airplanes. And I know you can all relate. We decide what airplane we want to fly. We've checked out the weather. It's looking good. The wind's not going to be too high. It's light and variable. We charge our batteries up, load our car, go to the field. We get there, and lo and behold, the weather dude was wrong as usual and the wind is howling and we decide even though we know it's really questionable whether or not we can handle that much wind I'm gonna fly anyway and when you do that's when bad things happen listen if you get to the field and the wind is howling and you know that's within your skill set for you and the plane you have knock yourself out if it's your beater that's what it's for give it a try see what happens but if it's an airplane that you'd like to keep in one piece and look in pristine, there's another decision you can make if you know it's too much for you. You can put that thing back in your truck, take it home, and just fly it another day. So all that said, nothing like proof, right? Well, I can provide a little. I mean, you're looking at somebody that's got a hangar full of airplanes. That Many of them have more than 100 flights, and I've got a handful with hundreds of flights. And they look as good as they did the day that I finished them. And they get flown. They get flown in wind. They get flown hard. I just simply stay within my wheelhouse. I make good decisions. I use some self-control and some discipline. I have a great time with them. I fly them for a long time. And they keep looking good. But I know a better example than me. We're going to go to another field and talk to a buddy of mine that has an astounding number of flights on a foam airplane and it looks good. So I'm here with my buddy Mike Kramer. Some of you have seen him before in another episode and we have your Avanti, your Freewing Avanti and the reason that I have you here, tell everybody how many flights you have on this. Uh, just over 1100. Just over 1100 flights and I notice it doesn't have a ton of hangar rash. It's not all scratched up and dinged up. How do you manage that? I'm just trying to be as careful as I can moving it from the, the garage to the car and back again. So basically, in, in your estimation, that old adage that if you buy a foamy, it's not going to last long and hanger rash is mandatory, you don't agree with that, do you? No. I mean, anything that I buy and I'm going to fly, I'm going to try and take care of it. I right. mean, I see a lot of guys buy foamies and just do combat with them. I right. would never do that. Right. Right. So basically, it just depends on what you do. I mean, right. obviously, if you want to act the fool with it, which you can absolutely do, we've done that with, with some of our airplanes, they're not going to last long. Yeah. But you don't fly circles either. You do sport aerobatics with this thing. It gets flown. He's not just doing circles, but he can fly well. So it doesn't get a lot of dings because you don't, don't get landing. You know how to land well. You know how to take off well. 
when the conditions are beyond what the plane and you can handle, you don't fly. Right. You just use discipline and you're careful and you can make a foamy last as long as you want, correct? Correct. That's what I think. Thank you, Mike. Yep. Well, there you go. Best example that I could come up with, but I have a lot of examples of hundreds of flights. That's just my guy that's got over a thousand, over 1,500 on one airplane. That's really impressive. Now, it didn't get past me that Mike Zavanti is a little bit faded. That is because he does not store it in a hangar that has LEDs. If you are using incandescent, fluorescent, or natural light in your hangar, that will fade paint and covering. You can avoid that largely by using LEDs. It's not that they'll never fade, but it will take a long time. They'll fade much, much sooner with the wrong kind of light. So, bottom line is the two sayings. Hanger rash is an inevitability with a foamy. You can't avoid it, and every airplane has an expiration date. Is that true? I don't think so. I think it's bull. It can be true. It's up to you. It's a choice. It's not an inevitability. I mean, that's just the simple truth of it. You can do a lot to help yourself fly an airplane a lot, keep it a long time, and having it looking as good in 10 years as it does when you get it finished. And I know a lot of people that have done just that. So that's going to wrap this one up. Leave us some comments. Let us know what you think about this and if there are other sayings that you've heard in RC that you think are BS that you'd like us to tackle. We'd love to do it for you. Hopefully, if the weather will improve, we will absolutely have something for you next week that's cool with wings that we're actually flying. Here's hoping. Take it easy.